suddenly he's realized what a moron he's been in uh, steaming up blacks against whites and starting a race war, you are mistaken. And don't forget for one minute that he and Michelle sat in this guy's church for 20 straight years and didn't walk out once. I want you to listen straight out, 16, 17, and 18, on the Savage Nation. I didn't say it, he did. The same issue is being fought today and has been fought since 1948. And historians were carried back to the 19th century. Biblical historians were carried back to the Book of Judges, where the original people, the Palestinians, and please remember, Jesus was a Palestinian. Stop, stop. You the Palestinian stop people. So this lying slime bag. Jeremiah Wright is a filthy lying slime ball. There were no Palestinians, Jerry. You know that. You are such a hater. But you know, certain things never change. Scapegoating the Jews is something that's been known through the ages. Now, why should Obama's preacher be left out of the mob that has used Jews as targets of hate? He's just like those who worked for Adolf Hitler before the, uh, before the ovens. So now there were no Jews, in, according to this lying sack of garbage. There weren't Jews in Israel that, uh, back then. No, it was all Palestinians. The word Palestinian was invented, by the way. It's a construct, like the word Latino, incidentally. Jesus, everyone knows, was a Jew, a Jewish rabbi. Everybody knows that. Every educated person knows that. But apparently the radicals, like Obama's preacher, made believe that uh, he it didn't exist. But it gets even better now. Listen how he tries to link up the first big lie with the next big lie in 17. The youth in Ferguson and the youth in Palestine have united together what? to remind us that the dots need to be connected. You see the race so war? What Dr. King said? What? Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Has That's implications you. for us as we stand beside our Palestinian brothers and sisters this who is have been done one now. of the most egregious injustices in the 20th and 21st centuries. Can you believe the deranged fool your president sat in his church for 20 years? He's now linking the uh, Palestinians with the black youth of Ferguson? And now he's linking in the great man, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who stood against anti-Semitism. Martin Luther King Jr. is famously known for having said, make no mistake about it. Those who claim that they're not anti-Jewish, just anti-Zionist, are lying. All anti-Zionists are anti-Jewish. You check it out and see if he didn't say that. So to use Dr. King to foster his anti-Semitism is a triple insult. Now it gets even better. Listen to clip 18 as this low-life sack of garbage, Jeremiah Wright, again tries to incite worldwide hatred against the poor Jews, not only in Israel but in America, trying to foment a race war. Listen to the next one. As we sit here, there's an apartheid wall being built twice the size of the Berlin Wall in height, keeping Palestinians off of illegally occupied territories where the Europeans have claimed that land as their own. Palestinians are saying Palestinian lives matters. We stand with you, we support you, we say God bless you. How could any Jew listening to this show ever vote for a Democrat? I don't understand. Excuse me, I do understand. Liberalism is a mental disorder. Liberalism is a mental disorder. And on that note, a quick break. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Bobby Kennedy, the son of Robert Kennedy, met with me in Los Angeles to give me some shocking and revealing and I mean terrible information on what's going on at the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, Georgia. It has been brought to our attention that the senior lead scientist for the Center of Disease Control has admitted that the MMR of vaccines and many of the vaccine shots have been genetically modified to attack black and Latino boys. This is in America. This is in the United States of America. 
in front of the White House over the weekend with the na Nation of Islam stirring up hatred with lies that you would have seen in, in Hitler's time, then now the CDC is modifying vaccines to attack black and Latino boys. This is something only utter morons could believe, number one. And believe, uh, believe me, they do. So what they want is a race war. Everyone who spoke there wanted to steam up people of color against white people. Every other word out of their mouth was against white people. And hatred such that I have never heard in my lifetime, all under the guise of freedom of speech, being put out by the so-called Million Man March speakers this weekend. And if you think the war on white police is by accident, you're mistaken. This war was triggered by Barack Obama, Eric Holder, and uh, Al Sharpton. Never forget him. They worked at it for years until it finally happened. Now there is a war on white police. It's ongoing. The police are now intimidated across America. Crime is spiraling out of control. The police are not fighting back. And even Ram Emanuel, as, as, as twisted as he is, with all the murders in Chicago, as corrupt and as twisted as Rahm Emanuel appears to be, even he is alarmed by the number of murders in his city of Chicago, where he's mayor. When he said the police of Chicago have become fetal, F-E-T-A-L, fetal, that's an interesting word. He said if they come upon a crime scene, they keep going because they don't want to lose their job or be sued. Really, and what are you going to do about it, Mr. Emanuel, now that you got what you wanted, which is intimidation of the policemen? In, in your city. What are you going to do now? Who are you going to call now? The ACLU? You're going to call up your friends, your friends Marvin at the law school to stop the crime? So <clears throat> be careful what you sow, and as you sow shall you reap. And if you seek the wind, you shall, you shall reap the whirlwind. And now we see the whirlwind being reaped. White cops are being assassinated across America. And does Obama once get up and say, stop it? Does he once get up and say, I never meant for you to go out and attack police? Has he ever said, I'm sorry for what I've done? I'm sorry if I gave you the impression that the police are bad. Has he ever said that? No, he's deaf, dumb, and blind. Just as he's deaf, dumb, and blind to what he's done in Syria, he's deaf, dumb, and blind as to what he's done in this country. He is the most dangerous, deranged individual. Okay, I'll stop right there. I'm not going to finish it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to continue it. He is the most dangerous, deranged individual that you could, could have ever constructed to be in the White House this long. And the average American doesn't know it. No, some of them, some white people in the suburbs drive around Obama 08 bumper stickers. I see them. Proud of it. Proud of it like morons. I want to get out and talk to them, but I don't. I have a podium. It's called the Savage Nation Radio Show and my best-selling books. And I wrote this book. I'm going to say it again. I wrote Government Zero for them. I need you, those of you who know what's going on, to buy a copy for your moron neighbor who has an Obama 08 bumper sticker, or your moron husband, or moron wife, or moron brother-in-law, who says, no, 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 I'm a, I'm a proud Democrat. I would never vote for those, those Republicans. No, no, no. I, and you say, don't you know what they've done? Give them the book, Government Zero. Ask them if they're intelligent enough to read it. References. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I'll turn this off. This stuff with the 40s nostalgia. Welcome to The Savage Nation. How about some uh, heavy metal to reset the program back to where it should be? The one I like the best is Metallica, which is short as straw. I love that one. And while you're looking for that tune to play on the Savage Nation, we're hour number three already on the program. And, uh, yeah, sure, we are in Minnesota and everywhere else in the country on many big stations. And I hope you'll enjoy our dance music tonight. Coming out to you from San Francisco. Oh, my God, what's going on? What's going on? It's a revolution right under your eyes. The civil war is being fought. 
You don't know it, of course. It's a shooting war in some places. If you're a white cop, you're on the receiving end of bullets. There is a civil war. I predicted a year ago, stop the coming civil war. Nobody has stopped the coming civil war. It's just getting worse. And this weekend, the fans were flamed by black activists in the so-called Million Man March. It was one hateful speaker after another, changing history, hating white man, hating the white man, hating America. Not one word from the con man in the White House saying none of this rhetoric is helpful. Nothing. In denial about his failures in the Middle East, in denial about his failures domestically, or, or are they failures? Many of you would say, Mike, you got it half right. He's not failing in the Middle East. He's succeeding because ISIS is on the move. He's not failing in America because he's wanted the crime wave. He's wanted the street rats to rise up and try to overthrow society. So he's succeeding, my, uh, my friend. I don't know which way you see it, but it doesn't really matter. The facts are the facts. No siree, Bob. Germany. Dateline, Munich. Migrant crime wave. Police capitulating. According to a classified document, the German government now estimates that Germany will receive as many as 1.5 million asylum seekers in this year, including 920,000 in the last quarter of 2015 alone. With family reunifications, the actual number of so-called asylum seekers could swell to more than 7 million. Now, when you say asylum, you know what that means, Muslim. What's astonishing to me is that while a dozen Arab clans hold reign over the city of Berlin's underworld, and while the Arab clans deal drugs, rob banks, burglarize department stores, run a parallel justice system, and attack the police, the crazy woman in Germany, Merkel, is bringing in more of them. How does a country survive the madness of a leader like Merkel? Well, ask yourself how the country survives the madness of a leader like Obama or the madness of a leader like Cameron. The answer is it doesn't. The answer is these are the last great days of the Western world. The Western world is being engulfed now by a wave that it can never recover from. If it sounds catastrophic and hysterical and alarmist, I apologize. None of the above is true. It's all real. This country cannot absorb the waves of Muslims that Obama wants to bring in. Any more than Germany will survive it. And what's even more astonishing is that we spoke in the last election and said no to massive immigration. And that was about Hispanics coming in from the South. And then to top it off, they tripled down on that. And now they're adding Muslims from the Middle East. What is the intent of the so-called liberals and their desire to sweep away in a tidal wave, sweep over rather in a tidal wave, the population of the nation? What are they trying to do? Why are the, 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 the maniacs who run the world doing this? What do they hope to gain by wiping out the demographics and the culture of the Western world? Tell me what they expect to happen. None of it is good. Why are they doing it then? Are they thinking it through? Or are they just following orders from George Soros and his, and his insane minions? I think they're actually thinking it through. I think they want total and absolute power over a world of slaves. You'll all be a slave. You're not much more than that now. I mean, you're a slave to entertainment. You're a slave to sports. You're a slave to your own digestive system. We all are to a certain extent. But when you have a media that is in such compliance with the government, as I define the government media complex, and it runs your whole life from morning till night, how different are you when you're mentally enslaved like this? Well, you're not in chains, thank God. You're free to drive around, you're free to buy what you want, and you're free to be a, an oaf who gets drunk and eats bad food. You're free to do nothing with yourself if you want. Is that freedom or is that slavery? I see everything now through the eyes of the radical Muslim. Do you know that? Do you know that I now see everything I look at through the eyes of the radical Muslim who is amongst us, how he looks upon this country? Every television show I look at through their eyes. Every time I go out in a restaurant, I see empty, I see the straw men and straw women sitting, gorging on food and alcohol, none of them getting any satisfaction whatsoever. I see an empty society, I do, I see a society where we're out without God, I see emptiness. I, I'm not trying to sound like a preacher here, but this is what I see, and I have to say it like it is, I know that it's a society that's died on the inside, which is why it's dying on the outside, which is why we can be penetrated 
like this. It's because there's no core.